The bill that is before this house is a, is amendment to the Public Procurement and Disposal Amendment Bill that is seeking to make sure that there is priority that is given to Kenyan farms when there is privatization or tendering in the in in this country, and secondly, the the need by Kenyans or the or the or the accountability that Kenyans are asking of this administration. So to this, this is a great welcome to us because it actually means that the views of the public are taken seriously, not just when they officially uh, speak about them, uh, when you're doing this public participation on through the, the, the regular streams, but when they, they, they express their dissatisfaction, even whichever media, because as a government we must change. We, we don't just want to have those parliamentary sittings or those county hall meetings where the views of the public are heard. This means that the tweets people make from the comfort of their homes to the TikTok videos they do, to the Instagram, to the WhatsApp setup that they post, expressing that, that, that these views actually matter. Do, and do, so do, I'm do celebrate we now, this great move. Do we now say that, uh, sh should Kenya now uh, think that President William Ruto is a listening president? For sure. President Ruto is coming out as a listening president and this administration is changing the way they engage with the members of the public. And if this continues, then even the protests that we see on the streets or having uh, people's property being destroyed or, or, or blocking our streets will not happen because if the protests that we do on social media can yield, can result to the cancellation of a done contract. This means that we are headed in the right direction and this great move is very welcome in this republic. Thank you, thank you, Chair. And, may, and maybe also uh, we, we, we can get more. Okay, uh, uh, tell us, what do you take of President William Ruto's uh, uh, speech this afternoon? Well, uh, the, the, the President has uh, touched on very many things uh, this afternoon. But uh, I want to start with the Adani deal, and I want to say that uh, I, I slightly differ from what the chairman of finance says, because with Adani having been indicted today in the USA, it <laughs> technically becomes impossible for Kenya to continue dealing with Adani. It means that if Kenya continues to deal with and to work with Adani, after they have been indicted in the USA, then USA will discontinue all the support and all the uh, financial uh, partnership that we have had with them, including also the Bretton Woods institutions like the IMF and the World Bank. They are very, very sensitive to the issues of corruption. And so the moment Adani has been indicted in, uh, in uh, America, it technically means that Adani cannot continue dealing with Kenya. And, and so what the president has done today is technically to remove, uh, I mean, to, to, to withdraw any dealings with Adani in, in, because in anticipation of any backlash coming from uh, the West. And, and so that is uh, a clever move. Absolutely. And, and, and definitely it means then that uh, our airport is now saved, JKIA, our Ketrako is saved, and also all the other dealings that Adani was having in this country are saved. And I would want to say in future, we should not even think of this kind of engagement again. I also expected the president to deal a little bit also with the issue of coffee particularly on the issue of uh, uh, the guaranteed minimum returns and uh, how this is going to help money get into people's pockets. So that's something that I still expect Senator, Senator, to be able to, to be yeah. the, what's, what, oh. what the Gen Zs, the people have been online condemning the, the, the Adani group and now it's, it's out. What will be your take, especially message to the young people? Um, uh, I think the main reason why the Adani bill has been cancelled is because of what is happening in the U.S., and uh, before then, it seemed like a straightforward deal. But you see, the president has to take cognizance of that, however good the PPP is, however well intended it is, and however managed they are to oil our projects, the Ketrako, and the expansion of our airport, we have to check the integrity as well. And it is a very good move that the president has done. We have demonstrated it in unison. We have given him a standing ovation for that decision. And um, we like that he has given the country hope as well. And uh, I like the example he has given of a farmer. When you plant and the seed is on the ground, you have to be patient for the results. So Kenyans need to calm down. We need to, be, to give the government faith. And I think the government doesn't want to just sit down and hope for the best. That's why we are, he's making the hard decisions no matter the noise, no matter the decibels. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Senator. Okay, you, what, what, do, do you see hope? Was there hope in the president's speech today? I think what I would want to say, democracy wins. In today's address was quite inclusive in all sectors that he has actually touched on. 
and I wish to state that I hope going forward this is the same spirit that will keep embracing of listening to people because the people are always supreme. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Ajmua, uh, what, 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 what do you take of the isolation of Adani? You've been in the committees uh, sitting uh, hearing on this matter. I, I think this was expected. From day one, the Adani deals were suspect. The Adani deals were wrongly placed, wrongly centered, and wrongly oriented. And therefore, what the president has done is to be accountable to the concerns of the people of Kenya and accept that Danny deals from day one were bound to were bound to fail and therefore what he has done is timely, progressive and Kenyan oriented. And I hope those who initiated the Danny deals will also be held eh, will also be held accountable so that we conclude that deal. And secondly, the state of the nation addresses the constitutional issue and which the president is obligated by law to do it annually. We, the, the, the representative from the livestock rearing community, are disappointed that the president did not mention at all issues that we expected him to map out for the livestock subsector. Secondly, the issue of, and this is critical, because he has addressed a number of security issues, the issue of detentions, the issue of abductions, the issue of disappearances by criminal elements within CID and other security sector must come to an end. Because the president has said, if the president is saying he's not allowing illegal detention and abductions, who is anybody else? And I want to say this. One of the elected leaders from Wajia, the Honorable Yusuf Hussein, is missing and has been abducted by the security agencies for the last 70 days. We want the president to live by his word and ensure and then direct those who are holding the Honorable Yusuf Hussein to release him so that he joins his family or otherwise take him to court. Thank you, Thank you so much. We, 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 of course, want to uh, just hear uh, from the members of the cabinet uh, before we proceed a hearing from the members of parliament. Uh, we have uh, 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 CS for the National Treasury, uh, the Honorable uh, John Bardi. A landmark decision has just been made by President William Ruto on the floor of the House, largely also touching on your ministry, uh, that is the Ministry of Finance. Uh, what, what is your take on this decision and how did this, how did cabinet and the president by at, at large arrive at this decision to, uh, you know, um, disengage with Adani Group? First of all, let me make it very clear that uh, PPP or public procurement, um, the public-private partnership is uh, a very important process that we have in our country and it is necessary, it is timely. However, there are processes to be followed in procuring, and there are various procurement methods. The one where we have, uh, which is now commonly known as the Adani deals, the JKIA and the others, have been through what we call PIP. And the beauty with PIP is that it can be stopped at whatever stage before the, the, the negotiations are concluded. So we were still at the procurement process. Whether it is JKIA or even the ones relating to energy, they were all under procurement process and uh, the negotiations had not even begun. For JKIA, what we are still doing was the due diligence. And so, to me, it is timely, it is stopped at a time when a, we don't have any legal challenges, no issues. Actually, this is part and parcel of the process of procuring through PIP, what we call public engagement and uh, also due diligence. And we have done due diligence as a government and the report from our partners is that there are a lot of questions around uh, the proposed uh, um, procurement method. Thank you. Yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Waziri Waziri Mbadi. Uh, quickly, quickly, wa uh, quickly, uh, wa Waziri yes. Eden Duale. Uh, welcome back from Azerbaijan, yes. from COP29. Uh, the president has made a landmark decision uh, this afternoon, uh, that of uh, you know cancellation of uh, the Adani Group. Where does this place Kenya and the public-private partnership going forward? I have been listening to presidents coming to make a set of the national address from President Kibaki, President Uhuru, and uh, President Ruto. I think two key issues I can pick. The direction of the president on the Adani is a very clear signal. Is a very clear signal on the war on corruption and the position of the president. Because the voices of the citizens 
can have been had and can only be said in the presence of the people's representative. Number two, public-private partnership is not new to Kenya. The SGR, the, the Express Highway, majority of our power producers are on PPR, I mean PPP. So we can still go back, do due diligence, get a repeatable farm, because we must fix our output. We must fix our uh, electricity generation. But because Kenyans are the citizens and uh, have raised a number of issues, I think he is a listening president. Second and more important that the president said today is that the era of extrajudicial killing must come to an end. It's only God, Allah, who gives you life and his own who takes. I think it was not fair. I mean, I will, I'm one person who campaigned on the platform for President Ruto on the agenda of an end to extrajudicial killing. Myself and him, let me talk of the president, he's a God-fearing person. I don't think President Ruto will ever in his life sanction extrajudicial killing. I think those Kenyans who are missing, now you have an opportunity to go to the DCI. Let's get facts, not fake news. If you have lost your loved one, please from tomorrow go to the DCI, document it, go to IPOA. The president has made it very, very clear. But in a, in a summary, the president talked about how when you invest in production, how you get the results. We invested in uh, cheap fertilizer, you have seen the result. Kenya today is food is sufficient. Kenya today wants to export sugar. He talked about uh, the Hassler Fund. About 85 billion have been given to 6.5 billion uh, million Kenyans. So I think it was the shortest uh, uh, set of the national address, but with a lot that we will discuss in the coming weeks. I'm not a member of parliament, so I won't have the opportunity uh, the next three days or the next three sitting to discuss. But I'm sure my colleagues are here. They will have their, 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 their day. And Thank very, you. And very quickly, maybe uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. as we also queue on the other end, yeah. uh, very just briefly, um, uh, you've heard the members of the cabinet say how this is very key for the country and for the cabinet and the country at large. What do you take of this afternoon's speech? I'll, I'll be very brief, uh, Leto. And number one, I think what we are losing here is the fact that the president was emphasizing how our, our economy is getting stronger. With a very low inflation of 2.7 percent, is a big indicator of our economic growth. With a GDP of 5.6 percent, is also a big indicator of our economic growth. And the fact that inflation is even lower, and every, every single indicator of economic stability of a country is shown today that we're economically strong with a good food security and almost, in my opinion, I think a good agricultural uh, production that we have today. So in, in essence, to finish it up, is that our state of the economy is very strong and we hope it will keep going that way. Thank you very much. From the, from the health committee, yes. the president touched on the universal health coverage. Yes. Just, just uh, take yes. your position here. Yes. Yeah. Yes. What, what do you take of his commitment with the, you know, so the, the social health insurance fund? I like his commitment. But uh, he brought a new term that we're actually going to look at, Taifa Care. So I really have to understand what really are we now calling Taifa Care. But his commitment has come out very well. Uh, the only thing that has been concerned to me when he has, he has talked about the cancellation of the Adani contracts, we know that in Sha also there was involvement of Adani. So I'm concerned. Is the one in Sha in the Elsa still remaining? or that one is also going to be cancelled. That is extremely important. It involved about 104 billion. It involved 104 billion shillings. So we would like to know, is the Adani involvement in Shah also going to be cancelled or it remains? And what are the details of this new terminology of Taifa care? But other than that, I like this involvement. Overall, the president actually address the issues of health, the issues of security, the issues of education, which are of concern. But I'm also uh, happy that he actually said, he gave timelines of what will be done when. Now that is good for us because now 
we are actually going to assess the seriousness on the basis of those timelines. But on Adani, just one thing I'd like to say. What has surprised me that as early as this morning, there was indications that the government is going to go on with, with the Adani contract. And then suddenly, in the afternoon it comes, it raises a question, what is the consultation process within government? Thank you so much, Mr. Uh, Dr. Gogo, just a quick one uh, before we go to other members. Just quickly, your comments. I want to appreciate the president for his well-measured uh, State of the Nation address. He's touched on critical matters. I like the way he came out strongly to talk about us bringing up young men into young men into adult men who are going to take care of the nation, who are going to take care of the women agenda. The women agenda is a male agenda. He addressed feminism that is happening. He also critically looked at ways of improving food security and uh, I want to appreciate him for mentioning uh, increment in agricultural production. I want to appreciate him and I want to pray that they translate it into improving nutritional security for the CBC children so that we have a well secured future. I also want to thank the president for addressing the issue of Adani and when he did that he realized that for the first time I'm a second member, uh, term member of parliament and members gave him a standing ovation to show how this series is to the people they represent. Long live Kenya, long live Ruto, we are in broad best government. Thank you. <laughs> All right, quickly, Mwishimiwa, for Bomet East, uh, just tell us your quick comments uh, so that we allow others to speak. Thank you very much. I'll just say only about two things. I was very pleased what the, the president told us today about the issues of sugar, that, um, you know, we have been importing sugar for a very long time, and very recently, that uh, we are just heading in the direction of exporting sugar so soon. So this shows that uh, there is a very good management of the government from the head of state and uh, coming down. Uh, the issue of Adani, for those who doesn't know, personally I've worked in that airport for a very long time. And I've been uh, interacting with the people who are working at the airport. They were just not for it. And um, they thought everything was going to be uh, so bad for them. And thank God that the president today made a pronouncement that this thing, the Adani deal, is going to be cancelled. And uh, this goes at a day where the US and uh, the America had made some arrest of the guys. It's called for the arrest of this guy, Adani, in America for um, money laundering and all the, the issues of uh, doing business uh, like what he wanted to do in Kenya here. I just wanted to applaud the president for all that good speech. Thank you so much. All right, thank you so much, Mwishimiwa. Uh, Mwishimiwa Kiborek, haraka haraka tutu. Pige kwa kiswaili, sasa wa swaili waelewe. Haraka haraka lafu malize. Asante sana, ndugu yangu kakangu. I want to say the president's speech was well measured. Mwenzangu kimaya atongea na kiswaili. The speech was well measured, and for the first time the president spoke real well, well touching all the issues. The speech started by acknowledging that we have challenges as a country, but we have to forge forward together as a country. The president talked well on Shah. He talked well on the Adani thing. He talked well on all the issues that affecting Kenya, including the university funding model. To me, the president today he spoke to the hearts of Kenyans. Today, the president spoke to the heart of those who believe in his tra transformation agenda and his visionary ideas of this country. I want to tell the president, he's the first listening president because for the first time we have a president who can drop an idea when Kenyans tell him th there's a better idea over what he, he, he believes he can deliver for this country. So I want to, I'm proud of the president's speech and we want to tell Kenyans that it's time that we rally behind the president and support him for when he succeeded, this Kenya does succeed. God bless Kenya. Mimi ningependa kupongeza rais. Kwa sababu yale mamba yambaya ama yataja siku ya leo, ni inaonyesha kwamba rais ni mtu anasikisa. Amaonyesha kwamba anasikisa wa Kenya. Na ukiangali yale mamba yambaya ama yakusia, kwanza tukiansia hii ya adani. Rais amaonyesha wa Kenya kwamba nimesikia sauti senu hii manona ya Adani yote tuyafutilia mbali. Ya pili rais pia amekusia mambo kama ile ya Moi University. Mimi kama ninavyotoka sehemu ya North Rift nataka kumpokeza rais kwa maana amesema ataifuatilia yeye mwenyewe. A, aone ya kwamba maneno ya Moi University imekuwa soft ndio wanafunzi wetu ambao wako kwa vifo vikuu waweze kusoma. Jambo la tatu ni kwa wale wakulima. Rais amakusia maneno ya, ya ukulima, amaangalia maneno ya kaawa, amaangalia maneno ya, ya masiwa, amaangalia maneno ya, ya sukari. Na amesema tukiendelea hivyo, 
Kenya tutairudisha mahali ambapo sisi wote tunaitaka hata kama tuko na changamoto ya madeni. Sasa mimi napongeza rais na tunakuambia rais tukiendelea hivyo Kenya itaenda mbele. Asante rais. Asante sana kwake Senator Mofaya. Alafu tukuje kwa chair wa pale security. Thank Quickly you. maoni yako watu wa Mount Kenya East wanasemaje leo? Uh, mimi, mimi I think uh, what I would say the, today the country is very happy. We have had a very, 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 very rich uh, speech from His Excellency the President. The President has dwelt very heavily on uh, the issue of corruption, and I'm very sure this country has been debated by corruption for a very long time. And I'm sure even from the, the speech, the President is very much committed to make sure that uh, Kenya is free from those corruption scandals and cartels. He has demonstrated that by cancelling the Adani, which has been too fishy, and uh, I think the country from now and forth is very happy, and we're going to see some very serious changes for that matter. Thank you, Senator. Mom Fire Trakanithi. Mshimiwa Dido Raso, tuambia tumoni yako, how do you take the president's speech today? What is your picking point from what he said? Thank you very much. I think one thing which I carried away from that speech is courage. The president was able to courageously, courageously talk about Adani, about corruption, about the issues that have been at the core of what Kenyans have been asking, particularly in the universal health care. Uh, secondly, the issue of micro, uh, microeconomic stability. The future of Kenya is bright because he's saying, look at it, the dollar was this much, now the dollar is just 129. We are able to give uh, farmers uh, subsidized fertilizers that we have enough food production. These all are indicators that Kenya is on the right trajectory. Thirdly and more importantly, I think is the issue of corruption. We say that one third of our income actually disappears, including what we borrow. It is the high time the president addressed himself to that, and he did. Going forward, I think this country must face corruption in the face and say it must stop. Thank you so much, Mishmua. Mishmua for Marakwet West, Kipchumba. Uh, the president has not talked about the lecturer strike, and today we had something that was happening in your committee, the Committee of Education. What do you say about it? Now, uh, today we had a meeting uh, before the Committee of Education, and uh, I want to tell the nation that we were, we were able to discuss the issue of teacher strike and uh, Treasury confirmed that we have 4.3 billion shillings. So for that reason, uh, there's a likelihood that, le that, that the lecturers will resume to classes this week. And uh, it will be positive because most of our students in university have been outside. They are not being taught. But uh, concerning today's, um, today's uh, sonar address by the president, I think he touched many things and it was a positive speech. There were many issues of, uh, that he, he touched on the issue of corruption, the issue of uh, fertilizer and so many other things. But for me, the highlight for the day was the issue of Adani. I want to sincerely thank him because he listened to Kenyans who, has, who have said that we do not associate ourselves with this deal of Adani. But now, going forward, the question is this. This deal has been cancelled. There will be consequences. This was a contract that was signed. There will be consequences for breach of the contract. And for that reason, those who were involved in the irregularities leading to the cancellation of this particular deal, they must, the law must take its course. They must be answerable to this country because we have lost and we will lose a lot of money because one, we have delayed the process. Number two, it has led to a cancellation, meaning therefore, that there was no enough advisory to the president because if this was cancelled, there was no enough advisory and therefore it has been declared null and void and therefore the consequences must flow. Thank you so much, Mwishimiwa. Quickly, Mwishimiwa, Mwani yako, Rakaraka, tuweleze jina lako kwanza kwa wakenya wakujiwe na Mwani yako. Let's continue mwishimi wa tuambia mauni yako sikia leo ni yapi ambao naona kuamba okay, Raisa Megusi ya vizuri. Nikiwa mchumbe wa Baringo Kusini, nataka ni shukuru kwanza Raisa kwa, kwa ile utuba aliweza kutuba leo kwa bunge. Na, na shukuru kwa sababu ime, alitoa utuba ambayo inashikana na maisha ya sasa ya wakenya. Asa vijana, wakati aliweza kutaja sana mambo ya kuandika kasi vijana na kutafutia vijana 
kasi hata nje ya nje ya Kenya hiyo ni kitu muhimu sana jambo lingine ni mambo ya elimu kwamba kuna mpangilio serikali wamepanga kwa mambo ya elimu mambo ya ukulima kuongeza wa ukulima uh, fertilizers ama mbe, uh, uh, fertilizers ndio wapate kutoa vyakula mingi katika katika shamba mambo mengine ambayo yeye aliweza kutaja ni mambo ya afya jinsi wataweza kwako na mpangilio ya afya mambo mengine ni mambo ya maendeleo hapo nchi yote ameweza kutaja na mambo ya corruption eh yeah, mambo ya corruption aliweza uh, kutaja kwa njia mzuri na hii mambo ya adani aliweza kusema kwamba amecancel hizo na zile zingine ambaye ya stima ameweza kucancel so, zote na hiyo ni kasi mzuri ambayo tunahitaji kama wa Kenya sana tutakuwa tuta na nafasi ya kuongea zaidi kuhusu hiyo okay acha niongee na senator alafu nije kwako kwa haraka senator you are the whistle blow of this thing yes. you made so many press conferences here in parliament yes. saying that we need to do away with their dani deals what does it make you feel today i'm very happy and grateful to his excellency the president as you are aware from day one uh, the hallmark of president state of the nation address today is the cancellation of adani deals both on energy and roads and contract i'm excited that we should also extend to health because we are aware that Adani was engaged in other uh, public private partnership this errors a new mark of engaging in transparent and accountable in terms of ppps in the country public private partnership and number two is that uh, to thank the president this is fighting cor corruption head on we have been right and you remember today even in the energy committee we did tell the cs of po and i to stop further engagement with adani group and you are aware even in the us the us justice department has indicted adani you remember they were is a freezing of the money by the Adani group of companies so i think this is a new mark that the government and i'm happy the president has directed all ministries that any engagement including public private partnership with international donors or partners or financiers that it should be open it should be transparent it should be with integrity so we expect other sectors that are facing corruption should be extended to other areas but i think the president has done extremely well in terms of universal health care in terms of food security in terms of affordable housing program the president's speech today was a, a brevity of soul of wit and we are proud of it i think now in conclusion the country now is uh, is economically stable and the vibrancy of democracy and political stability is the hallmark thank, thank you. you so much senator uh, quickly mshimiwa jina lako kwanza na utuambie maoni yako haraka haraka Uh, thank you so much. My name is Victor Koech Mandazi, Member of Parliament for Chapalungu Constituency. I am one most happy member today uh, because the President of Kenya has continuously proven himself as a listening president. Today, uh, all Kenyans are now happy that the monster that was going to derail the issues to do with the airport in our country is now gone. Uh, so secondly, then, the uh, President has proven himself continuously that this president is not just like any other president he's a listening president he listens to everyone he listens to all the leaders he listens to all the opinion leaders he listens to kenyans and that is why he has cancelled the adani deal that was going to eat into the monies of uh, of, of, of hard earned money from the kenyans uh, uh, secondly uh, the president has accepted that we have a challenge in sha just like any other new thing that we all embrace we we know that it is difficult for any other person or any other human being to embrace change he is accepting that uh, sha as a challenge but in due course time sha is going to work and is going to help the most vulnerable members of the public that come from the needy constituencies uh, that come from the needy families thank you so much honorable mandazi quickly mshimiwa senator just tell us your quick comments about the highlights of this uh, state of the nation address one thing that i'm very happy is on the wish of uh, women has been uh, really addressed by the president on this uh, address today the issue of the femicide and the meeting that the president had and uh, we are still looking forward that uh, to incorporate through the office of uh, the deputy president kindiki to bring this matter uh, to a closure as far as uh, the, the presidential uh, address was today something that we are very happy as women the issue of adani has been scrapped off great deal an indication that the president is listening to the people the same way as far as finance bill is concerned that he did not assent to it people have been concerned is the president really 
listening to Mwananchi, and the results are out here. Uh, we've seen uh, the, the issue of the cost has also been addressed uh, in terms of the issues of the fertilizer, cost of production of the cost materials he has also been able to address, and also the digital element as far as also uh, universal health care is concerned. The issue of taifa care, you know, this is something, taifa means, you know, the whole country, and it's something that is going to address matters health in this country. So we are very happy. Thank you so much. Thank you to my Senator Tabitha Mutinda. Mwishmiwa, your name again and uh, your comments quickly. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Hussein Weitan, the MP for Madara East. Uh, this, was, this was a very important uh, address of the nation. It has really given a lot of hope to Kenyans. You know, Kenyans have been complaining about issues related to Adani. You know, KAA employees and employees of JKIA were all complaining. People were hopeless. Uh, the, our president must have listened to, to, to Kenyans and, and cancelled all deals that are related to, to Adani, including that of transport uh, and, and, and that of energy. Uh, one thing that really uh, that was extremely very important is that the president has talked, you know, issues related to our women, our ladies. That are very important to our, our, our families, you know. We have a lot of respect to our ladies. Again, the issue of, of, of Taifa, you know, issues related to insurance is very important. You know, uh, the Shah issue, the, the what we call the NHIF replacement has been, has been a very big problem. But right now, we are going to have a universal health care for all Kenyans. And, and once you do that, we will have a lot of problem. What, what we expect now immediately is our economic growth and political stability in this country. Once we have that, we will be able to beat whatever enemies that we have. Thank you. Thank you, Moshimiwa. Lastly, before I go to Senator, your comments, Moshimiwa. Unahisi VP kwamba Rais Leo ni kama mesikiza wananchi hameondoa mamba ya dani. Yapi mba ya kugusa sana we? First of all, uh, mimi ni member of parliament kutoka Kipkeli on East. Uh, majina na ito wa Joseph Cherorot. Na nigependa kusema kwamba today's speech or uh, address ya president it is actually the best. One, you've talked about the Adani. Adani actually came uh, without our knowledge and the way it was brought, I think there was no due diligence which was done properly. And I uh, want to say, even though we have to build our airport, but what happens in future is that we have to do public participation and make sure that the investor who is going to be given any contract in this country, due diligence has to be done properly. And I want also to thank the president because of his commitment. Uh, he's a good listener. He has listened to the people of Kenya. Here in parliament, most of the members of parliament were calling each other Adani, which means uh, there was a lot of um, uh, jokes about Adani. So otherwise, we are so grateful to the president and even the issue of Shah and so many other things. We are going to support after the storm which was there. Now we are moving forward as Kenyans. All thank right, you. Thank so you, Mwishmiwa. Let me go to the Lakeside region. Broad-based government is here and you are seeing some benefits coming from it. What were your take, take home uh, from this? You see, the president's constitutional mandate is to address us on the state of the nation. And we as the representatives of the people, the state of the nation is as follows. Kenyans are hungry, Kenyans are broke, children and the education system is broken, our health sector is broken. The president speaks today as if he belongs to an alternative universe. Because in his presentation, he has focused on macroeconomic indicators to paint the picture that Kenyans are indeed doing very well. They've got money in the pocket, they've got food in the stomach, and we've got medication in our hospitals. I think that is far from the truth. We would have expected the president to make a proper, realistic, and genuine assessment of the state of the nation so that we can all rally together to find a solution to the problems bedeviling this country. I have heard my colleagues uh, talk about the issue of Adani. Adani was not the problem. Adani is a symptom of the problem, and the problem is corruption. I would have expected the president to make a serious commitment and say that he's bringing legislative proposals to restrict corruption cases to six months. The same way he has said that uh, issues to do with election petitions can be resolved in six months. That's the kind of commitment we want. It is not enough just to smother over the issue of corruption. I can tell you today, if you speak to Kenyans, their concern is about the economy, their concern is about the state of education, the state of health care, and corruption which has become like a hydra sucking life out of the basic institutions of this country. We hope 
that uh, it is now two and a half years since the president took office, that when he comes back to parliament, he will not be long on intentions and short on action. He will be long on action and short on intention. We will give him the support that he needs, but as far as you're concerned, the address today was fairly underwhelming. And it should be intentional. Yes. Thank you. All right. Well, I have here the CS for water. Waziri, I think this is your first interview here at Citizen TV. Uh, just your quick comments. Uh, your tie looks like mine. Uh, your tie looks like the one I'm wearing. So, so it means we are in the right track. So just your quick comments about the president's speech from the executive point of view. What did you take home from his speech? Uh, the president has... Just remind Kenyans again your name in full. Uh, my name is Gina Eric. I'm the cabinet secretary for water, sanitation and education. And the president has come out today very strongly to condemn corruption. He has come out strongly to ask us to, to put our efforts together, to work together as Kenyans, to put our differences aside and work towards transforming the lives of Kenyans. He has come out clearly on a femicide. He has asked that we, we treat everyone as equals and ensure that we work engaging everyone. He has extended a hand to all of us that as long as you're willing to work, and he has described the state of the nation as being resilient. Kenyans are strong people. Kenyans are hardworking. Kenyans are ambitious. And if we borrow on that and put our hands and minds together, we can transform this nation, especially on the docket of water. Because water is very key. And I, I felt the weight that there is need to ensure that all Kenyans, as per the call of the president, can access safe, adequate, and clean water. Not forgetting the component of sanitation that has lagged behind for quite a while. So I, I take the challenge to, to engage everyone, to turn the wheel, and ensure that Kenyans get these uh, key services. Okay, Waziri, before I let you go, uh, what has changed since, since you came into office? Because uh, it's been uh, about uh, three months or so? Yes, yes. I, I think you have not been following up, my friend. I have pushing all the key dams that are happening. We have I've been to Thoake, we have unlocked uh, Uma Dam, Mwache Dam is going on in the coast region. I have been to Western Kenya to check on uh, Malava cluster programs that are ongoing. And I am putting my people to task. It has been a while that this ministry has not been headed by a technical person. This is what I do. All the best, Waziri. Asante. Your comments, Mwishimiwa, your name and uh, constituents. Uh, my name is Deko Baro, MP for Garissa Town. Uh, thank you very much uh, and uh, commenting on the presidential address today, State of the Nation address, uh, two years down the line. Uh, I think the foundation has been laid for us as a country. Our economic indicators look like uh, there is going to be a, a lot of improvement in, in, in the cost of living. We have been told by the president and we are uh, witness to the fact that uh, there is a lot of change in terms of food prices, fuel prices, dollar coming down, all this we are witness to. So the country is on the right track in terms of the economic recovery. As, as he said, when we came in as a government or when he came in as, as, a, as a president of the country, we were doing very badly uh, in, uh, uh, as, uh, economically. So now the indicators are that we are going, uh, going well. We are doing well. The effect might not be felt immediately, but the, we are expecting it to be felt in the near future. The other issue the president talked about, which is very important to me as a member of parliament from uh, Garissa County, is the issue of uh, abduction and extrajudicial killing. It is happening, and I am happy that the president knows it is still going on, and he has promised that things will be done. The president might have the intentions, but those actors who are supposed to handle these issues the security agencies might be ignoring those uh, uh, directives. But as members of parliament, we will keep on talking about it. We will continue raising our voices on that issue of abduction because it's a very, very emotive issue in our region that young people are, ge are getting uh, lost. They are not, uh, families are losing their breadwinners. So those issues are issues. The other issue, which is very important, Thank you very much. Right, thank you so much. Senator, let me speak to you quickly. Senator for uh, Migori. Migori, yes. Senator, Eddie Okech, your comments about the, uh, this uh, speech by the president today. 
Uh, I think uh, generally the government was facing a, a big challenge of loss of public confidence under Article 72 of the Constitution. And that loss of public confidence was instigated by a number of factors, including a dwindling economy, uh, prices of goods and services have been very big issue that I think that the president has tried to address. Uh, there is also the issue of uh, generally education. And education is twofold. You know, the university education funding model vis-a-vis uh, -vis the shortage of teachers. I think the shortage of teachers, teachers uh, uh, has talked about uh, hiring 20,000 more teachers by January. The challenge here is then, how do you make sure that they are distributed equally among all communities? Because that has been a very overarching issue. The funding model, he has talked about it, but I think that it can be still adjusted to make it a better model. He has also talked about the issue of insecurity, abductions that have been in the country, and the challenge of government being able to deal with the issue of abductions in the context of what is it that is true and what is it that is, that is untrue. I think that the bottom line must be that the people of Kenya must be kept safe and that nobody should feel like uh, at any given time the police can exercise any kind of overarching authority. But I think that the, the takeaway is the issue of Adani. I think that the issue of Adani has been a, a very major thorn in the flesh of Kenyans in, in, in the context of public trust um, and the contact that we have seen with JKIA and the fears that were there. And uh, I think this is the highlight in terms of uh, the confidence and the public trust that the government needed at this particular time. I hope that you listen more and make some radical changes and some radical decision that reflect the listening to the people of Kenya as they are crying about a number of issues. Thank you so much, Senator. Uh, to, now to Senator for Embu, uh, Senator Mundegi. Tuambia tumoni yako arakaraka. Uh, Rais leo amezungumza mengi. Umechukua yapi ambayo mekufraisha zaide? Rais wa Kenya ameongea kitu hile ni mambo mazuri kwa sababu watu waku wa, wa anaspekti ya ongea vile ameongea. Leo ameongea kuhusu mambo ya angrikacha kwa sababu mambo ya angrikacha katika serikali yake ameweka kibayo mbaire. Pia ameongea mambo ya walimu vile uh, kwa hii kipindi ya miaka mbili aliandika ameanjiri walimu wengi na sasa ataongezea walimu wengine mambo mengine ameongea ni mambo ya havia unajua kwa kwa kipindi ambaye imepita kumekuwa kuko na msukasuko wa mambo ya havia na sasa watu wamelewa vile na manisha kwa sababu unajua kuna ugonjwa ya kanza na vile amesema watu kama watanjiandikiza vizuri utakuta mtu akiongeka kanza atakuwa analipa chochote kwa hiyo ni njia mzuri ya havia lakini hapo akienda kumalizia kuna mambo ameongea ambaye imefanya e, Senate na Parliament wasimame na kusema amefanya kitu anja hii kufanya mambo ya mambo ya contractor ambaye alikuwa amepatua mambo ya uwanja ya ndege na mambo ya Kentraco ambaye amesema hiyo contractor imefunjiruwa mbali na pia uh, watu wakua wa kivikiri atasema hivyo na kasema kutoka sasa hii citizen mambo ya kila kitu itakuwa inafanya kazi kwa hivyo tumefurahia sana ningeomba uh, serikali ni mtu wa kusikiza ni kumanisha njusi ya kiwa embo alisema amesalimua na mambisho na watu wote ni kama uh, watu wameka chini na ninaambia watu wote ni kama kusalimiwa kwa hiyo ni kama walikuwa wameongea hiyo maneno kwa hiyo tumefurahia ile kitu ningeomba tumshikilie juu ya economy ya Kenya ndio tuweze kuendelea mbele asante sana asante senator uh, sasa tunaenda senator wa Naro county senator Ledama uh, just tell us as a house leadership in the in the opposition in the broad based government now what does it make you feel after uh, the, the, the meeting that you had today about the energy situation in Kenya well let me focus on the issue of the PPPs which is something which has been a thorn in the flesh. One of the biggest problems that we had is the issue of lack of disclosure. Earlier on today, at the sitting of the Energy Committee, we focus on the issue, and particularly the issue where there were serious issues that have been raised about the Adani Group. And I'm very happy that the President has taken a bold step to be able to cancel the deal, all the pro procurement, uh, you know, deals with Adani to do with JKIA and also to do with the issue of the energy sector. I think it is imperative that any kind of PPP, and we're not saying that PPPs are bad, but it's important for us to be able to carry full public participation, full disclosure. In the Committee of Energy, we had demanded for us to be able to see the due diligence report. One of the things which was concerning is that when the Cabinet Secretary was saying that he was um, he had sent a team of Ketraco to be able to go in and carry out due, due diligence. That in itself was actually wrong because due diligence is carried out by an independent body. So we're quite happy that that deal has actually been cancelled. Now we need to wiggle around the legal issues 
I'm happy that the JKA deal had not been signed. I'm concerned a little bit about the Ketwako deal, if there's any agreement that had been reached. But when it comes to the issue of uh, bribery, PPP section uh, 41 gives us a leeway that we cannot be able to proceed if there's any sort of like uh, any uh, bribery or any corruption allegation. We have to make sure that everything we do is above board. So we're quite happy on that. Okay, Senator, what is it going to cost us for cancelling this deal? Like I said, on the JKIA deal, it was really just a, a, a memorandum of understanding on engagement that Adani came in with their proposal and said, we want to uh, develop your runway. We want to build another um, terminal. At that point, we are still negotiating. And we're quite happy because there was also a court case and there was a court order that had stopped. So when it comes to the issue of the JKIA, it is it would be premature for me to say it's going to cost us this because at that point we had not yet signed anything. There's also a dispute resolution clause. Now, on the issue of Ketrako, that is the one which I'm very much concerned about because if a deal had already been reached, but because of this new revelation, you know, we can be able to waggle or wiggle out and say that there's no way that we can be able to use public funds in with a company that has got questionable uh, you know practices so for me i think as a country we have to be firm and say that we will fight corruption uh, today the president has made me happy by saying that uh, he's going to cancel that deal i've been fighting that deal for quite some time so i'm quite i'm quite elated and i think that's my take home thank you, yes thank you quickly mushima for cases uh, just tell us your comments quickly because we have to go thank you so much mine first of all is to appreciate the president for the first time, I think in his speech that he has made, he's giving hope to Kenyans. And uh, without repeating what has been said, especially on the issue of cancellation of a Dani deal and the tender, I still have to say, even on the issue of Ketrako, remember the procurement process doesn't end until the end process is completed, including due diligence. And part of the due diligence is to establish the background on projects or the conduct of the person, even beyond uh, on the issues that probably are declared as part of the procurement process. But lastly, because of time, is to only call on Kenyans. After listening to the president today, president vividly standing ground and demonstrating that he is one person that he takes into interest the sayings, the hearings, uh, the calls from Kenyans and responding to the call from Kenyans. On the same note, I want to ask Kenyans to give patience to the President of the Republic of Kenya. At least for two years, he's able to hone where the challenges, the issue of Shiv and Shah, he has given a clear roadmap and where challenges are, he has admitted there are challenges on transition, but they have a team they are set to respond to every negative feedback on implementation. I will need to ask every person, every agency, along in this particular implementation of all this agenda the president has set, including Faith First. This is Kenya for all of us. We don't have a Kenya for specific people. Let us all of us come together and support our president. Lastly, where there are issues of crap that has been mentioned, including this process of Adani, I want to ask that every agency the president has called on them to take their work seriously. If they are craft issues along this particular procurement processes that the president has declared to be cancelled. I want to ask that action can be, a, a, I mean, a responsibility can be apportioned accordingly and action therefore be taken. Thank you so much, Mishimiwa. Quickly, Mishimiwa, your name and uh, your constituency and your views, quickly. Thank you, Geoffrey Mulanya in Pinambale. I'm very happy with the president's speech today. He has given us take home and so many issues that he has tackled that affect our nation. One is the issue of Adani. As a member of the Energy Committee, we were really concerned with the Adani deal with the Ketraco because we as an oversight uh, team through the, the Committee of Energy, we were not involved and we were not even aware. Last week we sat as a committee, we had raised questions why Ketraco had uh, moved ahead to try and engage Adani without even bringing to us so that we look at it as people's representative so that we approve the deal. But the president has seen it wise that uh, given the deal that Adan has done worldwide, it's very important that the Adan deal be cancelled, which we, I personally applaud. Number two, I applaud the president on the issue of corruption. The president has given us a challenge that the election petitions are done within six months. So I also urge my fellow members that now that next week we come back to debate the president's speech, we need to ensure that we amend the, uh, the anti-corruption laws so that the anti-corruption cases can be finished within six months as we finish the election petitions. Because corruption is one of the issues that uh, is really causing us problem in this country. 
So we are losing a lot of money. We had the Minister for uh, the, uh, the, the, the Cabinet Secretary for Finance saying that we are losing almost a billion a day. So if we can uh, cap this through quick uh, finalization of court cases on corruption, then we'll save Kenyans a lot, we'll save our country. The money that we, we lose will be channeled to other, uh, other use. Thank you so much. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Quickly, as we wrap yes. it up, Monia uh, Karakaraka Jina Lako, Mr. Mwishimiwa, and Unatoko Ape. Daniel Manduku, Dr. Daniel Manduku, member for Nyaribari Masaba. I think I want to be brief and simple. I think the president has listened to the pulse of the nation, and for once, he has articulated the issues that Kenyans wanted to hear. Most of us were surprised because we thought he will go off way and make promises. But he has actually answered virtually every question we had. More than that, he has taken us a very long roadmap. He started off by giving us poetics. I think he's been reading Shakespeare or uh, Ole Soinka's writings. And so, as we were listening to his, theatric, to, to his, to his the, 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 theoretical framework, he punched us with that. And uh, it spoke to the issues that are extremely